Hello and welcome to Speaking Football. My name's Tommy Hay and I'm joined here in Madrid by my colleague Ruben Palomero for episode number 110 of this series. Thank you to everyone out there for joining us today. Now, if you're with us on the radio, welcome. And remember that if you enjoyed listening to Richard Vaughn live over the last hour, you can hear more from Richard after this show on La Hora Extra. So as always, stick around. Now, there are lots of interesting things to talk about on today's programme. In a few minutes, we'll be looking at how the English press have reacted to their national side's worst home defeat since 1928. And we'll also be discussing Liverpool's latest signing, Darwin Nunez from Uruguay. We'll continue our show by having a conversation about the things that footballers usually do after they retire. And later, Ruben and I will be challenging each other to see if we can guess some very complicated idiomatic expressions in English and in Spanish. We'll end the show, as always, with our football cliché of the day, which this week involves the English verb to gasp, susurrar, to gasp. So I wonder what that could be. Stick around till the end of the programme to find out what it is. First, though, let's begin the programme, as always, by revealing the identity of last week's mystery player. OK, Ruben, you can kick us off with clue number one. He played in his native country... Portugal, Spain, and Malaysia. Very good. And Ruben, he is absolutely nailed. How do we say that in Spanish? Clavado. Nailed. <laughs> or dar, dar en el clavo? Did you say dar en el blanco? Lo, lo he clavado, diríamos. Clavado. Lo he clavado. That's it. He absolutely nailed the pronunciation of Malaysia. It's not Malaysia, as many Spanish people or Spanish speakers usually say. It's Malaysia. So this guy, he played in his native country. He played in Portugal, Spain, and Malaysia. Clue number two, he was a great inspiration for Lionel Messi. Fue una inspiración para Messi. He was a great inspiration for Messi. Clue number three, Ruben. He won two leagues with Valencia. Very good. He won two leagues with Valencia. He could have won some Champions Leagues as well with Valencia. Mm -hmm. Very unlucky not to. So yeah, he won two leagues with Valencia. A very successful career. And that tells you as well the kind of time that he played in because recently Valencia haven't been winning many leagues. So think back to when they won two leagues and that gives you an idea of the time that he played in. Clue number four, he had a lot of injuries in his career. Now remember, tener una lesión is to have an injury. To be injured is estar lesionado. And lesionarse is to get injured. If we want to say the part of our body that we injured, we would say, for example, me lesioné la rodilla, and we would say, I injured my knee. I injured my knee. So there are four problems that we have, four different ways to say different things, okay? So we'll have a, have a quick review of that um, in a few minutes when we're talking about uh, this word, to, to be injured, to have injuries, and to get injured, because it's very important. So this player... Tuvo muchas lesiones en su carrera. He had a lot of injuries in his career. And clue number five, Ruben. His nickname is the Little Clown. Very good. In Spanish, that would be the payasito. 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 Very good. Payasito. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah nickname. I think when it, when it, when anybody has a nickname as well, it's all it's quite a clue because there's usually a ninety percent chance that they're from Argentina because for some reason I don't know why Argentinian football players always have little uh, always have like nicknames, don't they? The little clown, the spider. That's uh, Alvarez See, just now is the spider. In this case, is because uh, his father uh, was called the clown. <laughs> ah, okay, so his father was El Payaso. El Payaso was the clown and he's the, uh, the little clown there you go ah okay very interesting um who was our mystery player Ruben? our mystery player was pablo aymar very good exactly in english we used to call well, wait, on the, the english speaking press we would say pablo aymar but it's aymar i believe the pronunciation aymar wonderful wonderful football player i remember watching him for valencia when i when i started to watch la liga when i was a kid i absolutely loved uh, Aymar, I just thought he was a wonderful, wonderful player, and he's very popular in Valencia, of course, also in Portugal, and in and in, in his native Argentina as well. A very creative player, wasn't he? Very, very creative. Um, did we have many winners this week? Ruben? A lot of them, a lot of them. For example, <laughs> Sebastian dice, "Is Pablo Aymar such a great player, and now one of the coach of Argentina national team?" 
Mm -hmm. one, of the, one, one of the coaches of one of the coaches, uh, yeah, yeah. Of, so of the national Danny team. Quintal que dice the little cloud Ayala. A ver, que no sé cómo se dice payasito. Bruno Martín también lo acertó. Qué jugadorazo. Víctor Alex García dice he's a great, a great payasito. Pablito Aymar. I remember watching in a summer tournament in Argentina when he played in River Plate and shot the pen a penalty against Oscar Córdoba. Boca Juniors goalkeeper and Pablito def define it easily. He only had 18 years. Pablito, 10 in extinction. También acertó Daniel Martín Castillo, un clásico Javi Tamames que pone aunar. Creo que, creo que <ríe> te fijas en el teclado, ha puesto la letra de al lado, pero sí, es ahí me acuerdo. Ah, ok, aunar. Víctor Alex, <ríe> Víctor Alex García vuelve a decirnos. Y en addiction, I remember Pablito had excellent technical intelligence and always choose the best option in the last pass. Currently, Pablito is an Argentinian, Argentina trainer and soon will be able to be a coach in a big team in Europe. Wow, una, un pronóstico. También acertó eh, Javi, que lo dice such a fantastic player. He was on a break of winning the Champions League a couple of decades ago. Lorenzo ha manchado, que también dice Pablito y Mar hates his nickname. Ah. Boria, top tier player. <risa> Kuman también lo acertó, que dice Paul, there is a C. Um, Juan de los Santos, que también acierta CBP, también lo acertó Tete Cardozo y Jordi Nordic Madre mía, a lot of them and they are talking a lot, eh yeah, they're talking Tommy, a they lot. are practicing uh, their English They're doing very well as well, very very interesting, I like that, to be on the brink estar a punto de hacer algo to be on the, he was on the brink of winning a, the, the Champions League, that's a very good expression Um, just be careful. I don't know who it was. Somebody said he he only had 18 years. Remember, he only uh, he was only 18 he was years only. old. He was only 18 years old. Yeah, very good player from very young. And I think the same person said he was creative and very intelligent as a player. Um, I think he was. I, I just I loved watching him. And the English teams, I remember, were very nervous about playing against him. I remember there was a game, I think it was Liverpool against Valencia some years ago. Uh, and I remember Jamie Carragher saying that uh, Aymar was the, the player that they were most nervous about playing because he was just so creative and, and technically um, gifted, we would say, mm -hmm. technically uh, technically uh, gifted, like really, really skillful, we would say. Um, so really, really good. Yeah, some fantastic sentences there. Uh, just uh, on this point that I made earlier about the word uh, to be injured, Uh, remember, estar lesionado. How do we say that? To be injured? To be injured. To be injured. And if you want to say tener una lesión? Uh, mm. I have injuries. <laughs> no. Oh. Injure. So in, injure is the verb. So injury. Injury, injury yeah. Injury. Is lesión. To, to have an injury. That's to it. An injury. Uh, to get injured is lesionarse. Lesionarse. Punto. You know, if you just say me lesioné. I got injured. I got injured. But if you want to say the part of your body that you that you injured, it's complicated. You have to say to injure plus possessive plus the body part. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, for example, me lesioné eh, la pierna. For example, you would say I. I got injured. Mm, my, careful. No, I, I injured my yeah. leg. Very good. Exactly. I injured my leg. Me lesioné. Punto. I got injured. But me lesioné. La pierna, I injured my leg. That's it. So, uh, tener lesiones, to have injuries. Aymar had a lot of, of injuries in his career, which is very sad. It happens with, with some players that just have problems, you know, with injuries. But uh, he, was, he was great to watch. I loved watching him. And a lot of my early memories of Spanish football come uh, from, from that great Valencia team uh, that, that worked with uh, Benitez. So, yeah, really, really good. And thank you to everybody that wrote in. That was some fantastic uh, responses there. And, and well done for practicing your English as well. It makes our job much more interesting when you do that. Well done. Okay, well, it's now our first section of the program. And... Uh, to start, we're going to have a look at what's been happening in the world of football in recent days, and that means that it's time for this week's press review. Okay, so it was not a good week for the English national team, La Selección Inglesa. It was not a good uh, week for them at all. They had a terrible, terrible defeat. Now remember, defeat or loss is... Derrota. Derrota is what we mm -hmm. would say, usually. Uh, when you look at the clasificación, when you look at the table, normally it says W for win, D for draw, 
and L for derrota. L for loss. Loss. Is what we say, like perdida. Uh, but you can also say defeat. You can also say that. So the, the title from the Guardian newspaper, and a, a very interesting word that we have here is Gareth, Gareth Southgate, the manager, Gareth Southgate takes responsibility for chastening defeat by Hungary. Now, chastening, that's a very, very interesting word. Um, first of all, to take responsibility, would you say tomar or asumir? Asume la responsabilidad. That's uh, exactly. In English, we say tomar. But yes, uh, asumir la responsabilidad uh, for chastening defeat. Have you ever seen this word, uh, chastening? Chastening, I think, is something like humillante, ¿no? Yeah, I think that's probably quite a good way. You know, it's one of these words that you can um, that you can understand more or less from the context, you know, because you know you know what happened. Uh, England lost 4-0 at home uh, against against Hungary. Against Hungary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, against Hungary. I know. In 2022, we're not yeah. playing against Puskas and Kubala. Yeah, and it's true that Hungary are coming back. Obviously, they were in the last uh, Euros and everything like that, but it's not the great. Uh, it's not a great team by by any means. Um, certainly, if you compare it to England, you know where where these guys are playing, it's not it's not the same level. Well, the the definition of of chasing chasing is to make someone understand that they have failed or done something wrong and make them want to improve. So to chasing oh. someone, it, it's almost like kind of, um, it's almost like echar una bronca, you sí. know, like to tell someone off. So if yeah. something's chastening, it's like it's, you could maybe say it's humillante, you could maybe translate it as that, but it's like embarrassing almost, sí. you know, embarrassing, humillante. Pero bonfosa, podría decir también, ¿no? Yeah, shameful, shameful, yeah. It's like they're being shamed by this. Um, so Gareth Southgate takes responsibility for Chastening defeat by Hungary. How would you translate that into sí, Spanish? Eh, Gareth eh, Puerta del Sur. No, es Southgate, <laughs> eso lo de Rodri. Eh, Gareth Southgate eh, pues, asume la responsabilidad por la humillante, o sea, por la bochornosa derrota contra Hungría. Mm, bochornoso. I like that. That's a good word. Yeah, bochornosa de, derrota. Fantastic. Yeah, chastening defeat by Hungary. The word is C-H-A-S-T-E-N-I-N-G. Chastening. Very, very good word. Uh, so he, they suffered this terrible defeat, this chastening defeat. Um, the Guardian newspaper reports it was the heaviest defeat England have sustained on their own shores since 1928. So if, when they say shores, shores is uh, a shore is the orilla. So shores is orillas. Mm -hmm. So if you if you lose on your own shores or if something happens on your shores, it means in tu país, in your country. Yeah. Mm. So it was the heaviest defeat. What do we mean by la derrota más pesada? Sí, la, la más dura. Digamos. Más dura. O sea, más dolor, exactly. dolorosa. In English, we say la, de, la derrota más pesada. Ah, oh, heavy una, defeat. Yeah, heavy, heavy defeat. Una derrota pesada. So it was the heaviest defeat England have, have had uh, in their, their own country since 1928, which is really, really incredible. Um, here's a question for you, Ruben. What is Spain's worst ever defeat? Do you know? Of the, the worst results that, that Spain have ever had in general? I, for, I'm, I don't know. For example, I think one of them, I, 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 had, I had to think about it because, you know, yeah. this is... But, for example, I remember the game against uh, Netherlands in Brazil uh -huh. in the World Cup. You were the current uh, champions oh, and yeah. you lost the match very, very... In a, in a, with 5-1. 5-1, yeah, yeah, you know? with Van Persie's... Uh, and I think and... that that was a chastening um, defeat. A chastening defeat. Yes. I, think it, I think it was probably the most chastening defeat. It wasn't the heaviest, but it was close. Um, Spain actually has two, uh, two, like a joint heaviest defeat. So the first one was in 1928 against Italy. They lost 7-1. Uh, and the other one was in 1931, and it was actually the Spanish Republic at the time. It was, the, it was December 1931, so the Republic of Spain had just been declared. Um, and they, they equaled the, the record of the heaviest defeat. They lost 7-1 against England. Um, so you have two joint uh, worst ones ever. Um, and Scotland are, I think, even slightly worse. Scotland's heaviest defeat was against Uruguay in the 1954 World Cup. I think it was 7-0. I think the well, score for that one. So more or less the same as Spain, 7-0. But I think ours was worse because it was in a World Cup. You know, have you... Yeah, have you, exactly. Have you gonna... <laughs> in this <laughs> competition, it's normal. We are 
you can see if you're watching the match you are you are seeing a lot of changes uh, each match because mm -hmm. the, the players are tired it's very mm -hmm. hot exactly. and well i suppose that um, they are not fo focused on mm, that's mm, that match the and they're thinking yeah. about uh, they are going to be on holidays next week <laughs> and they have to rest because next year is going to be a very long year yeah. with, with the World Cup in the middle of the league. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so, exactly. Oh, it's, it's going to be very strange. And I think the competition is obviously it's better than a friendly match, but mm. it's not uh, very attractive for for the fans. No, exactly, exactly. But yeah, so it's... it's um. Yeah, I think if you're going to lose heavily, if you're going to have a heavy defeat, uh, it's probably better to to lose it in a in a friendly match than in a World Cup like Scotland did. So, yeah, but yeah, so England have the that, that was in the Nations League, so it was a competition, and they lost four nil at home to Hungary. And uh, we say that the an expression we have in English is the knives are out. I think we've spoken about this before in this program. Las navajas están. Or sea, están, you could say Saca they're, they're sacadas. sacadas, literally, yeah. So that if you say las, las navajas están sacadas, it means the the knives are out. It just means that the people are very angry at Southgate and, and they're criticizing him a lot. So, yeah, he says that um, the next few weeks are going to be quite difficult for him. <laughs> and I can I can understand that. And the second article we have is uh, talking a lot about Uruguay today. Darwin Núñez. Um, is the latest signing for Liverpool. And uh, people are quite excited about this, but I think a lot of people in England don't know much about uh, Darwin Núñez. Now, I'm right in thinking he played for Almería for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. he played for Almería, and the last year was playing in Benfica. And he played for Benfica as well. So I think people on the continent know a lot about him, but uh, obviously in England, they don't have a clue uh, who he is. No tienen ni idea. They don't have a clue about who he is. The Independent had an article which is, who is Darwin Núñez? And what does this transfer mean for Liverpool? So, quién es? Who is who is Darwin Núñez? Um, and the word I, I wanted to teach you today is this word aportar, the Spanish verb aportar in English. Do you know how to say aportar in English? It's very simple, yeah. actually, in English. Maybe it's, I'm sure it's very simple, but I don't know how to do. If I want to say something similar, how it's going to help a team or something mm. like that? He's yeah. going to help the team doing that. That's it, yeah. So, um, guys, spe guys speaking, if you don't know the exact translation of the word, you can do what Ruben uh, just did there, and you can think of an alternative. There's no problem looking for an alternative. Um, so, yeah, what, 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 what can he? What, what did you say again, Ruben? I what said, um, how Darwin Nunez is going to help the team? Yeah, how how is Darwin Nunez going to help the team? That's perfect. Well, the, the uh, an even simpler way to say it is uh, aportar can be bring the same as traer mm -hmm. or llevar. Yeah, to bring. Um, so um, if you want to say, for example, uh, aportará mucho or va a aportar mucho, how would you say that? He will. He's going to bring a lot of things. Very good. Exactly. He's going to bring a lot of things. Fantastic. Yeah, he's going to bring a lot of things or he will bring a lot of things. That's it. Va a aportar mucho. Um, so there's uh, a good bit from this uh, article um, in The Guardian, which says he is a right footed forward. Now, what does that mean? He's a right footed forward. Es un... que, que es el correcto delantero diestro. Mm. Oh, well, correcto, no. So, um, you've, Pero... I would just say, es un delantero diestro. Es un delantero yeah. diestro. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, he's a right-footed. Remember, to be right-footed is... To be... <laughs> yeah, that's true. They don't know anything about him. <laughs> The only thing you can say is that you know everything about it. Exactly, that's it. Yes, yeah, so he's a right-footed <laughs> forward. Um, that's basically what they said about him. They said he can play up front on his own. So jugar como delantero, you can say to play as a striker. You can mm -hmm. say to play as an attacker. And you mm -hmm. can also say to play up front, like arriba. Jugar arriba. Basically, you can say that in English. So he can play up front on his own. What does that mean? Que puede jugar eh, cerca del área, ¿no? Que se puede buscar un poco la vida, ¿no? Es un poco. <laughs> mm, I would okay. say, puede jugar ahí, puede jugar como delantero. Says to play like... up from on your own. Yeah, means jugar solo. Ah, yeah. vale. Se, ser like el único delantero. I don't puede know jugar how it, arriba but... solo. That's mm -hmm. it. Jugar arriba solo. That's it. To play up front on your own, the possessive. He can play up front on his own, porque estamos hablando de él. So he can play up front on his own. Uh, that's it. So, puede jugar arriba solo, basically. He can play up front with a partner. 
Pues Puedo partner. jugar con una pareja, con un compañero arriba. That's it, con un compañero, exactly. Or he can play wide on the left. Play up front, wide on the left. Que puede mm. jugar, pues, en la izquierda. Exactly, fantastic, yeah. So, arriba, pero a la izquierda. Arriba a la play, izquierda, sí. Yeah, you can play up front and wide on the left. Y yeah. dices to play up. Yeah, to play up front. You need to, to say up that. From. Okay. Up front. Vale, vale. Como el yeah. otro día aprendimos to play down. Exactly. Exactly. Para bajar expectativas. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah to exactly. Play up from. Okay. Exactly. To play up front. F R O N T. Jugar arriba o jugar como delantero. So you can play up front on his own. Puede jugar arriba solo. He can play up front with a partner, con, con un compañero. Or he can play up front on the left or wide on the left. So he's very versatile. How would you say that in Spanish? Versatile. Muy versátil. Es muy versátil. versátil. Exactly. It's very versatile. Very good. Uh, he's also excellent in the air. What does that mean to be excellent in the air? To be good que, in the que air. Es muy, que es muy bueno por arriba. Exactly. Yeah. Like, so he, he's a good. Uh, sometimes people say, how do you say cabeceador in English? And I say, it's quite, yeah, it's quite difficult though, because we don't, we would have to say he's a good header of the ball or something like that. But we also usually say he's good in the air or she's good in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, to be good in the air is probably what I would say. So yeah, I think he can bring aportar uh, a lot of things to the, to Liverpool, and I'm excited to see him. And I'm very excited to see Diaz as well uh, playing for Liverpool. Yeah. Pardon me, next season I think it's going to be really really good to watch them in the Premier League. Um, and an another article that um, I think we have time. Yeah, we have time to talk about this. Uh, uh, Mujeres más allá del fútbol. I thought this was a very very interesting article. I saw it on Marca. But I think it's actually from the La Liga website. Um, it's talking about mujeres más allá del fútbol. How do you say más allá? Do you know? It begins with B. Beyond is what we say for más allá. So if it was uh, mujeres más allá del fútbol, it would be women. Women. Uh, be, beyond. Be, beyond the, the football. Yeah, women beyond, beyond fo the football. Yeah, beyond football. Beyond. So mm -hmm. the word B. E Y O N D beyond Masaya. Ah, beyond. Beyond, exactly. Women beyond football. Eh, ¿Qué hacen cuando se retiran? Now, how do you say retirarse? It's to, to, to retire. To retire. For example, so, you're going to it, say. It's interesting that in, in football, <clears throat> in football, in English, sorry, eh, retirarse and jubilarse are the same word. To retire. So uh, people talk about how, uh, uh, for example, um, You could say Chavi retired a few years ago. It doesn't mean that se, se jubiló. Mm -hmm. It just means that se retiró. In English, we don't distinguish. We have to know from the context. So to, to retire from a sport is what we would say. So what do they do when they retire? Um, I think this is a really interesting expression. And we have a great uh, expression in Spanish, which is very similar to the English, which is colgar las botas. Colgar las botas. You can say to hang up the boots or hang on the cleats. You cleats in, the in America. States. Yeah. Exactly. In America, they say cleats. C L. I think it's C L E E. C L E A T S. Is it with an A? Yeah. yeah. God, I never say cleats in my life. I only say <laughs> cleats when I'm talking to like you or Alberto Alonso sometimes, because he always asks me. But yeah, we we say to hang up uh, your boots is what we yeah. would say. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hey, colgar las botas. Oh God, I've got a terrible cough. Yeah, you, you <clears throat> can say that because when you are, uh, for example, in the Spanish culture. Uh, you mm -hmm. can say to colgar las botas, to, ha to hang out your boots. Y hay una expresión también que se dice que es cortarse la coleta. Ah. Because the, porque los, los the bullfighters, los toreros, uh -huh. cuando se retiraban, se cortaban la coleta. Right, okay. So they cut their ponytail. Yeah. They cut their so ponytail. They cut the ponytail. So many, there's so many uh, bullfighting references in Spanish. Yeah, a lot of them. Remember that the bullfighting was the, the first um, event In Spain, in the 50s, in the 40s, even the sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, exactly. So that's it. It leaves its mark. Deja su huella. It leaves its mark, claro. absolutely. So the, the, this article is, is from the La Liga website, and it's all about female footballers preparing for retirement. La jubilación. Preparing for retirement. Um, and there's a program. It's called The Second Half, which I think is very interesting. Es, es un programa formativo. Now, formar is to train Formar says to be trained, but if you want to say uh, formativo, we would use the adjective training, training. So how would we say that? Es un programa formativo. It's a training program. Exactly. It's a training program. 
So it's a training program to help uh, professional players uh, prepare themselves for normal life, if you want to call that, because footballers don't really have a normal life, do they? It's not a normal way to live. Um, so they, they basically, uh, they, they treat them as uh, desarrollo profesional. So how do you say desarrollo? Do you know? Develop. Development. De- yeah, development would be desarrollo. Desarrollar would be to develop, exactly. So professional development, desarrollo profesional. And it, it helps them to reinforce, reforzar, to reinforce the, the abilities that they already have. Uh, and then they, they try to make them adapt to normal jobs, let's say. Um, so I think it's really, really interesting that they're doing this. And I think it's very positive. Um, I think every football uh, player should learn how to do this. People, Some people say, well, they have lots of money, so they don't have to work. But that's not what people are like. You know, people want to work. People want to be active, I think. That's my opinion. You don't want to just be sitting in your house with all with all that money because they can have problems, can't they, after they retire, football football players. Um what why do you why do you think that happens? Why do you think so many uh, football players have problems when they retire? Well, first of all, um, a lot of them they don't have uh, enough experience or they don't know the they are not capable of uh, to to manage to gestion your money. The, I think it's very important to manage their money. To manage, to manage their money. To manage your money mm-hmm. because it's very important to know what to do with that. Mm-hmm. Because um, if you don't know how to invest or you don't invest properly, uh, you can be you can be arruinado. How do you say arruinado? <laughs> you can be broke or you can you be, can be broke. You can yeah. be broke. Yeah, you can be. We wouldn't say ruined. We would yeah. say. You can be you can be broke or yeah. you could be bankrupt. You could. Say. I, I remember a Movistar um, program in yeah. which they were interview a lot of them that uh, they had a lot of money when they were playing football, but at the end of that they they broke. Um, yeah, they, they were broke. They were broke. They were and broke. Yeah. Obviously, I think it's, it's important uh, to know what to do uh, after um, you are, after. To retire. Yeah, after after retirement. After retirement. After retirement. Después de la jubilación. After Después retirement. La... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. After retirement. Yeah, I think um, from from what I know about modern clubs, I think they're much better now than they were maybe 10, 20 years ago. Um, for example, I know that uh, Athletic Bilbao have a very good education system with their children, where they talk about like yeah. um, the some of the dangers, los peligros, the dangers yeah. of the real world, like uh, casa de apuestas, betting websites, casinos, yeah. and things like that. That's a massive problem for for football players. Um, there's a very famous example of a an ex Arsenal player, Paul Merson, is his name is, um, and he he said he lost seven million pounds uh, betting and things like that. So I mean that's. That's absolutely terrible. Yeah, it's very I think it comes from a lack of um, it, it, education, really. It's very interesting because in the NBA, when you are you arrive to the to the league, mm-hmm. uh, the the rookies receive mm-hmm. a, a courses about mm-hmm. what to do, and they talk about drugs, mm-hmm. women, mm-hmm. The money, and mm-hmm. what to do and not to do. Yeah, exactly. and it's very interesting because I heard that to Jorge Garbajosa, the mm-hmm. the, the current. Uh, FEB director mm-hmm. and when he arrived there he was 29 years old or third, with two, two kids something like that mm. and uh, say obviously uh, that's a course for kids of 18 years old mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. it's very funny for me to, to listen to that because well obviously it's different because when you're yeah. very very young you, you don't know what to do in your life and you can make mistakes yeah, you're very immature. I, God, like I, I think I'm still immature. I think, <laughs> but when you're 18, you know you're just a kid. So, and a lot of these uh, guys and, and girls come through when they're very, very young. So, I think that uh, this program, um, the second half, which is I believe it's just for women's football at the moment, um, but I, I think it's just a fantastic idea uh, to prepare these these women for for normal life because it it has to be difficult to to transition um, into yeah. that. So, I think it's really, really good. And um, one last question. Can you think of any famous examples of what football players have done after retirement? I have a famous, I have a good one, which was Ferenc Puskas. Do you remember what he did after he retired? Do you I remember know. what his project was? He opened a sausage factory. Yeah, I know that. I, know. <laughs> I think we talk about it. We did. Sausage, when we did a mystery player with him, 
We exactly. talk about it, yeah. Exactly. The sausage factory in Madrid. That was that's one of my favorite ones that he did that. In Scotland, the typical thing was that uh, players used to open bars, you know, pubs and things like that. So yeah. you would you have a pub. Alex Ferguson did that when he retired, and I think he worked in the pub as well. Um, so that was a typical typical thing. Do you remember a program called Cheers? It was from the 1990s. Yes, yes. The program's called Cheers. Well, that that was a the yeah, the a baseball, was a baseball player. player. Yeah. yeah, very common for baseball players as well. Open a bar, and that's your mm-hmm. that's your job from that point on. So you use the money that you have to open a bar. Nowadays, I don't think they do it too much. Um, I think they have a lot of money and they they end up doing other things. But yeah, I think it's um it's a very interesting topic, and I definitely recommend reading that article. It's in Spanish, but it's a very interesting read. Mujeres más allá del fútbol que hacen cuando se retiran. It's on the marca. Uh, and La Liga website. So, yeah, definitely recommend it. Very interesting. Uh, we're going to have to take a quick break at the moment. When we come back, Ruben and I will be testing each other's skill as language learners with our section that we call Play On Words. So, five minute break, and then we'll be back with that game. Stick around. Okay, welcome back to Speaking Football. Now, it's once again that time of the week where Ruben and I test each other's skill as language learners with a section that we call Play on Words. Okay, to if you're listening to us for the first time, a quick reminder of the concept of this game. I give Ruben a word in English or an expression in English, and he has to guess, adivinar, he has to guess the meaning of the word. And likewise, he's going to give me a word in Spanish, and I'm going to have to guess that. So it's a mutual thing. We're both learning here. We're both teachers and students uh, in this uh, moment of, of, of the program. Now, Ruben, would you like to start or would you like me to start? I, w- I want to start today. You want to start? Okay. You're going to give me a I word in Spanish. Start. Okay. The first word I'm going to give you is a Spanish word, and it's trencilla. 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 Okay. That sounds interesting. Who is the trencilla in the football? Who is the trencilla in the football? Well, first of all, I'm going to have to try and break this down. I don't know how to say that. Analizarlo. To, to break this down. So, <laughs> um, es una trenza, no? A trenza is a thing that you, in your hair. David Beckham had trenzas. Yeah, believe, exactly. Uh, when it's he played for Real Madrid. I uh, no, when he played for Man- I can't was it Madrid or United he had uh, trenzas. They're like um braids, we would yeah. say. Braids uh, in English. So David Beckham had trenzas. Now I'm trying to think. Now trencilla, would that be a little braid? A little braid? Trencilla? A little braid. A little braid. A little okay. braid. That's not really helping me. <laughs> um <laughs> However, I think I have a, I'm, I'm definitely familiar with this word. Am I right in thinking that it's quite an old word, that we don't use it too much nowadays? Es una antigua? palabra de hace mucho tiempo, sí. Es una palabra, es, es una palabra que se utiliza desde hace mucho tiempo. Right, okay. Now, um, I think I know what this is because, uh, have you ever seen the, there's a Netflix program, a, a series called The English Game. It's about the origins of football. Yeah. Um, and it's like how football started in England and Scotland as well. Um, and my grandfather is a big fan of this. And I, I remember <laughs> watching it once and it had in the, in the subtitles this word trencilla. I'm 99% sure. So it's a person, isn't it? It's a person, yeah. It's a person. Um, and it's not a player. No, it's not a player. It's not a player. Nah, I know what this is. Yeah, so I believe that the Trentia is the referee. Yeah, you know yeah. that, you know that, you know. You've been a lot of time in Spain. No, literally, like, um, so I, I've, I've heard it before, but I remember, like, um, the first time I saw it was on that, in, in the series, The English Game uh, on Netflix. And, uh, yeah, but, just, well. It's, there, it's the strange word, because it's like a little braid. You know? <laughs> I, well, I don't little... know why you call it that, though. Yeah, yeah. The, the little the, was the, the explanation is that in the a lot of time ago the referees has uh, in their in their jackets in the mm-hmm. jackets okay. um, they have they were una especie de adornos, tiene unos adornos que eran así mm-hmm. como si fueran trenzas pequeñas mm-hmm. de lana o de algodón. Entonces se les empezó a llamar los trencillas por eso hace muchísimos años. Desde luego ahora nadie lleva trencillas en la ropa. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah. So yeah, that's true. Like cowboys as well had little braids and their yeah. uh, los vaqueros. Yeah. yeah, they had little braids yeah. as well in their. Uh... And now, nobody, nobody says. Uh, well, now you can you can hear to trencilla a lot of a lot of times. I've heard I've heard commentators saying it before. 
Um, but but like, I wouldn't have noticed it if it wasn't for um, the English game that they say. I just remember that very very clearly that, uh, right. that, that this word little braid trencilla. Yeah. So yeah, it's just an old fashioned word for the referee. There you go. Very especially, especially because the narrator has to say referee a lot of times, and yeah. they had to make up new words because exactly. you're saying the ref, the ref, the ref, el trencilla, el colegiado, el árbitro. Yeah. El colegiado, yeah, it's like the, yeah. No, we would just say the ref or the or the referee. We're not very, I can't really think of any. I'll have you to don't think say about anything that. else? You don't, you don't have a special word for them? Sometimes the black, I, man, the I, black man? The, the man in black. The man, the man in black. black. The man yeah, in the black. man in black. Yeah, sometimes like, um, yeah, sometimes like, and, and people say that, and it, like the fans sometimes shout that if they think that the, the referee isn't uh, impartial, if they think the referee is going with the other team. Um, so like for example imagine imagine Sunderland are playing Newcastle and you know how do you know that Newcastle are uh, people from Newcastle are called Geordies 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 like uh, not like the Macbeth no 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 but a, pe- a person a <laughs> person from Newcastle so like for example a, a, like a Donostiarra or someone from San Sebastian ah, okay. someone from uh, from Newcastle is a Geordie so sometimes if the Sunderland supporters think that the referee is in favour of Newcastle, they'll say, uh, who, quién es? who is the Geordie in the black? You could who's say, the who's the Geordie in the black? <laughs> um, and there's a common cantico, it's a common chant that they'll say. Oh, so possible. the man in black sometimes, but no, I would usually just say the ref or the referee normally is what you would mm-hmm. say. Very good. Okay. Right, so one nil to me. Let's see if Ruben can empatar, if he can equalize. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to draw. <laughs> I'm going to try and draw. Okay, let's see. So mm-hmm. my word is that again, they're both British. We don't really the the, the words cross over a lot. I'm going to give you one which is nice and simple. Hammy. 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 H a. I know what a hammer is. It's a car. A hammer. That's a hammer, yeah, hammer. Yeah, H-U-M-M-E-R. a hammer is a martillo también. A hammer with A is martillo. H A. Ah, this is with is H A double M Y. Uh, this word that I'm saying to you is H A double M Y. Hammy. Okay, okay hammy. A ver, en inglés muchas veces se pone una Y al final y es como algo cariñoso, ¿no? Yeah. No, the left mm-hmm. lefty. O sea, hammy mm-hmm. podría ser algo cariñoso de algo que empieza por ham. Uh, cariñoso. I'm trying to think of it, if it's like a nice way to say. It. Uh, it's a short, a shortened version, you could say. For example, um, I know what a hamstring is. Very good. I know what a hamstring is. Yeah. Well, it's good. a hammy. Uh, I have a le- I have an an injury. Injury. In my hamming, in my in my <laughs> hamstring, you can say that. Very good, exactly. Yeah, so, you can uh, say that. Uh, exactly. So it's a it's an abbreviation for hamstring. Is what we would say. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> my hammy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I thought that was the answer. <laughs> I, I won't I, say that because I don't remember hamstring because I, I love that one. I was hoping that you would say something related to jamón, you know, claro. ham, because jamón <laughs> is ham, H-A-M. Remember, it's not jam. That's y, mant- y, y son los isquiotibiales, de hecho, ¿no? Porque es, que, es como hamstring, es como serían las cuerdas del jamón. Mm-hmm. Mm, cuerdas del jamón, exactly. The hamstring is what we say. And you would <laughs> say lo, the isquiotibiales. So, That's true. I was thinking about to, to say I don't know what to say. But, oh my God, no me lo puedo creer porque pensaba que no sería eso. <laughs> no, that's exactly what it is. Pensé so, que hammy. era algo así como una especie de otra cosa. No, that's okay, it. Yeah, hammy. For, for example, right, let's go back to the thing. At the beginning of the program, we were talking about uh, Aymar. And you, we were saying that he had injuries. Um, you had an injury in his career. But if you want to say, for example, me lesioné. Yeah, and if you then you want to say the I So, I injured. I I, I injured my hamstrings. Hamstrings. My hammies. <laughs> or my, my hammy. <laughs> my hammy. That's it. But it's singular. Okay, so normally you don't usually injure both hamstrings. You normally. Ah, okay, okay. One. In Spain yeah. we say in plural. Yes, yeah, isquiotibiales. But you would say, would you say me lesioné los los isquiotibiales o el músculo isquiotibial. That's it. So you in have... English, in English, we only say el músculo isquiotibial. Ah, vale. So you have to say I injured my hamstring muscle. Very good. Or hamstring. Punto. Or oh, my I, hamstring. I injured my hamstring. Or oh, my hammy. But, or my hammy. Exactly. <laughs> I injured my hammy. Uh, that's an informal way to say it. You can also say um, another verb you can use is uh, pull 
to pull that's another way of saying yeah. if it's a if it's a, like a, an injury to a muscle so i pulled my hamstring i pulled my hammy and a very informal way to say it and this is usually in england that they say this is to use a verb to do you say i done my hammy that means me lesioné uh, oh. el cotibial. so i done my hammy very informal i i pulled my hammy or i injured my hammy more standard ways to say it but you're absolutely correct hammy is hamstring that's what mm-hmm. we would say. wow very good well done very lag. <laughs> very okay lag. one one now uh what do we have uh, in the next spanish word Ruben? Okay. what country are we going to in spanish we are going to have an argentinian word mm-hmm. and the word is abanico 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 y abanico ya sabe, sabe lo que, do you know what abanico is mm-hmm. yeah in, in, in normal, um, in normal, it would be the if you if you go to see a flamenco show, sometimes yeah. people a, a, have a, a, man, a manual fan, <laughs> a manual <laughs> fan, very good, a manual fan, exactly. Well, yeah, we, we, we have an electric fan, which is a ventilador, and then mm-hmm. abanico is a, a fan as well. You could sí. say a manual fan or a handheld fan, which would be a just like the things that you see a lot of people if you if you watch old videos of Spain maybe in the 20th century you see a lot of people with women normally with um manual fans or hand yes. fans or, and locomia too. yeah exactly okay well but in argentina this word has a special sense right okay uh, you're gonna have to help me I, i'm i'm trying to I, I think i've definitely heard this before abanico uh, mm. is it is it something positive well, it's not negative. It's not negative. Yeah. Do you know what's a, que es un abanico en el ciclismo? No. Cuando el pelotón, o sea, el grupo de ciclistas van juntos y de repente mm. hay unos que se separan de otros. Mm. Si dicen, se ha producido un abanico. Right, okay. So they split. Yeah. When the group yeah. of cyclists splits. This okay. is not going to help you, but I remember it. I meant you. <laughs> un abanico. Pero te voy a decir una frase. Una frase okay. que puedes encontrar en internet. Tutorial sobre fútbol. Diseña tu ejercicio con abanico. Design your exercise with abanico. Mm. <laughs> okay, right. I can say abanico is a, a kind of play, un tipo de jugar. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 this, is, this is really um, ringing a bell. And I think when you tell me this, I'll, I'll, I'll know it. It's just the fact that it's from Argentina. That's, that's confusing me because I thought I've heard it in Spanish as well. Yo no, lo he oído, yo no lo he oído en mi vida. No, you've never heard it. Then I, en Spain, no. A ver, maybe, maybe, maybe if you are in a, in a technical team mm-hmm. and you have to talk with the game players and you have to explain what you want to do, maybe you can use this word. But especially because we are living in a, a globalized world. You can, you can <laughs> Glo- hear that, you can word. use, and everybody to understand what this means. But okay. I've never heard it. So it's a type of play. Is it an attacking play? Yeah. It's an attacking play, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to think. Maybe it's something related to move the ball wide, you know, like to pass the ball wide to the wings. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's close. You're close. You're close. Um, yes. Well, I'm going to say that's okay. That's okay. Right, okay. It could be that. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to... Well, we, we, my guess would be right. I, I was probably wrong, but my guess would be something to do with wide play, maybe like a cross at the end or something like that. Uh, but I, I honestly don't know. You're gonna. I am going to. Me. I am going to give you the definition of abanico. Is okay. Una serie de pases que realizan los defensores y los volantes haciendo el correr el balón de una banda a la otra, hasta ah. que se encuentra la posibilidad de hacer un pase profundo. Eh, mover la pelota de una banda a otra hasta que encuentres un buen pase. Eh, eso, esa forma, y te fijas, es como un abanico es semicircular entonces yeah. se denomina hacer el abanico a eso mm. a pasar el balón de un lado a otro hasta que encuentras una buena línea de pase eso right. es okay. okay that's a very difficult thing to translate <laughs> yeah. um, God I wouldn't know how to say that like probably something like wide play intricate wide play um, mm. you would say so you're on the right hand side for example and you're 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 passing it uh, intricately you're passing it between the players and to try and, and waiting for the correct pass, waiting yeah. for the decisive there, pass. I, think, I, I, I imagine there's not going to be a, a exactly word for define that, but maybe yeah. a description about what you want to do. Yeah, maybe wide play. 
There's something Wait I did weird to say, yeah, intricate way. Pero sería como ampliar el campo, ¿no? Como abrir las bandas. No, yeah, like white play could be anything on la banda. It's very yeah. general. Yeah. Uh, so white play, intricate white play, or yeah, intricate white play, I would say. But you say hacer, in, in Argentina they say hacer. Un... Es, 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 sí, sí. Sí, hacer el abanico, hacer, una, hacer un abanico. Sí. Un abanico, yeah. God, no, I've never heard that sí, sí. before. Yeah, I'd probably say something like intricate white play. But I think I get half a point for that because I said it's something to do with white players, <laughs> I think I said. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself half a point, <laughs> medio punto, for that. Very good. Okay, and my second word uh, in English, it's not actually a word, it's, it's, a, it's a phrase. Maybe you've heard of this before. We use it a lot in football, a lot in football. Against the run... Of play. play. Against think, the yeah. run of play. Es como against es eh, contra, ¿no? Contra. Eh, correr el juego. To run the play. But, ok, a ver. Mm. To run the play is like to master the game. To master the match, ¿no? To master the play. To, to run a match would be, yeah, like uh, dominar. Un dominar el juego. Yeah. O sea, controlar yeah. el partido. To master the, the game. Mm -hmm. Pero, y si dices contra controlar el juego, eh, es algo... Mm. It could be something like uh, something will happens that changes that because you are playing very well, the team is mastered the match, but the goalkeeper has an, an injury. And now uh, this go against the run of play because you're, they were mastering and they are not mastering anymore. You're, you're going in the right direction. You're going in the right direction. Um, so it's something that is related to how the game is going. So I, remember, it's against the run of play. Against the run of play. So to run the play is dominar mm -hmm. el, el juego, de dominar el partido. Mm -hmm. But uh, the run of play is different. So the run of play basically is uh, the, the, the rhythm of the game or the direction of the game. And if something is against the run of play, that's what I'm looking for. I'll give you a, a clue, okay? You can score or you can concede. Puedes marcar. O encajar against the run of play. I don't know if that makes. Ah, vale. Eso es que puedes marcar cuando está dominando, cuando no está dominando. Exactly, exactly. So, exactly. So, uh, if you score with the run of play, that's cuando estás dominando. And if you score against the run against of play, against run of play. O sea, you are playing a match and you are not the master in the match, but you scored. Mm -hmm. And you score against the run of play. Exactly. That's perfect. Exactly. How would you say that in Spanish? Marcar. Eh, a ver, es que. O sea, puedes dominar el partido. Has marcado cuando no estabas dominando el partido. O has marcado. Yeah. No tenemos una palabra tan concreta. Hemos Very marcado cuando no, no hemos, cuando no estábamos dominando el partido. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's interesting. Yeah. So marcar cuando no estás dominando el partido is to score against the run of play. And encajar, to concede. Eh, Against the run of play is cuando estás dominando el partido, pero encajas. Ah, qué bueno. Okay, so you um, when Benitez scored against Liverpool in the in the final of the Champions League, the commentators I remember they were saying uh, that Real Madrid scored against the run of play, and it's true that if you look at the statistics of the game, Liverpool were dominating in terms of shots and all that kind of stuff, possession and everything. So a lot of people said um, Madrid scored against the run of play. No estaban dominando el partido, pero marcaron. So they scored against the run of play. And uh, uh, you could say Liverpool conceded against the, the run of play. That's how we would say it. But yeah, there's not, a, there's not a, a, an exact way to translate it in, into Spanish. Very, very interesting. Sometimes we have perfect phrases for things and th that we don't yeah. have it in Spanish. And sometimes it's the opposite. You have a perfect way to say something. And we don't have a, a good way yeah, of translating it. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, but yeah, fantastic. Very, very okay. good. Okay, well, really, really uh, fantastic. There are some lots of really good expressions, lots of things that we've learned. I've learned a lot from that anyway. Uh, we're just entering into the penultimate part of uh, today's show, and we're going to have a, a quick look at a particular thing that you hear a lot of in football, an expression that we hear a lot in football, uh, and that means that it's time for this week's cliché of the day. So actually, Ruben, in this title, we, we almost have two cliches uh, because we have two words that are very interesting. The cliche of the day is last gasp, last gasp. Um, but the, the full title is Wales comeback thwarted 
by Memphis Depay's Last Gasp Netherlands winner. Now, before we guess what last gasp is, what does to thwart mean? Yeah, throat, throat is frustrado, no? Frustrar, thwart. Frustrar. It's a very difficult word to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> thwart, yeah. Um, wart, <laughs> this is kind of disgusting. Wart is beruga, like a horrible thing that you have in mm. your skin. Thwart, T-H-W-A-R-T. Uh, is is a uh, is um is thwart fast, fastidiar. People, uh, if there's any Harry Potter fans listening, what's the name of Harry Potter's school? Do you know? Hogwarts. Hogwarts. What's a hog? A hog is a pig. It's like a type of pig, yeah. So beruga the berugas the the cerdo <laughs> sort of thing. Hogwarts is what we would say. Hogwarts. <laughs> Yeah, that's Hogwarts. what it's called. Yeah, I Hogwarts. didn't know that. Oh my god! <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Hogwarts is a, that's a disgusting word, really. Yeah. Um, Hogwarts, but yeah, to thwart is fastidiar, um, like impedir that kind of thing. So Wales come back. La remontada de Gales is frustrada por eh, el gol de Memphis de Pais eh, en el último minutos por una Holanda ganadora. Fantastic. Okay, so Ruben's guess what this means: last gasp, a last gasp goal. Um, gasp is susurrar. Susurrar, sí. Yeah, exactly. To go <laughs> like that. That's Pero puedes a... decir last gasp como un gol en el último minuto, en el último yeah. susurro. En el último susurro. Do we, would you say that in Spanish? No, nosotros decimos en el último minuto. En el último minuto. Decir, en último el minuto. último segundo. En, en el, el último, último suspiro decimos. Suspiro. En el último ah. suspiro. Nosotros decimos susurro, gasp, y nosotros decimos suspiro. Suspiro. Ah, ok. Pero su, suspiro es... Um, that's more like... Uh, whisper. Sus no, suspiro es como hacer así. Oh, yeah, sorry. Es suspirar. Ah, yeah, yeah, sorry, not, not a whisper. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, to, to, to sigh is what I mean. Yeah, there's a famous song. I watched a, a, a movie called Soldados de Salamina, and there was a, a famous uh, song that the guy, the guy was singing. What was it? Suspiros de España. Sí. Is the name of the song. So, like, Sighs of Spain is the, mm -hmm. name, <laughs> the name of that song. But, okay, so a gap is, uh, to gasp is susurrar. And the last mm -hmm. gasp uh, winner is what we would say, like, el gol decisivo en el último minuto. So Wales come back thwarted by the Memphis Depay's last gasp Netherlands winner. Um, yeah, really, really good to score a last gasp winner is to marcar un gol en el último minuto. El gol decisivo en el último minuto. Uh, can you think of any famous last gasp winners, uh, Ruben? Some of your favorite uh, ones that you've seen in the history of football? Well, I suppose the Iniesta's goal is a last gasp goal. Uh -huh. uh, and even yeah, yeah. Iniesta scoring in Stamford Bridge a last gasp goal too. Yep. Sergio Ramos was very famous for a, for a score two goals in in the last gasp minute. Yeah, uh, uh, like two. La we would just say an adjective. Last two minute. last gasp goals. Yeah, exactly. Oh uh, God, yeah, the one against Atletico. And, was, and in your opinion, what is the most famous last gasp goal? Last gasp goal. The most famous last gasp goal. I think outside of Spain, I would agree that. Iniesta's is probably the famous, most famous last gas goal in Spain. Maybe then Ramos. Outside of Spain, I would say easily, easily, it's Sergio Aguero's goal, Manchester City against Queen's Park Rangers to win the oh, league. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, oh, yeah, very important. Oh, Sergio Roberto against PSG. Yeah. The 6 1. Another great a last, ga last yeah. gas goal. But yeah, yeah. actually, we, we have a, a clip of the commentary from Sergio Aguero's last gas goal for Manchester City, last day of the season to win the league for uh, Manchester City and his team. And it was absolutely incredible. Let's remember this moment. It's finished at Sunderland. Manchester United have done all they can. That Rooney goal was enough for the three points. Manchester City are still alive here. Balotelli, Aguero! Yeah, like I remember watching that with my dad. It was uh, 2012 and Manchester City were losing 2-1 and they scored two goals in, in injury time, in stoppage time. And like literally two goals in about four minutes. It was absolutely incredible. And Aguero's goal, I'll never forget watching it. You know, it was just amazing. So yeah, that's the definition of a last gasp goal. But it's one of the best things about football, 100%. Yeah, brilliant. Fantastic. Well, we do not have too much time left, so it's time to finish the program, as always, by giving you the clues for next week's mystery player. Okay, Ruben, clue number one. 
He's a one club man. Very good. He only played for one team. He's a one club man. Clue number two. This is very interesting. A million people watched his wedding, which was broadcast, uh, retransmitida. It was broadcast live on television. So a million people watched this wedding, which was broadcast live on television. So he's very famous, not only in the sporting press, La Prensa Deportiva, but also the, the yellow press, La Prensa Rosa. In English, we say La Prensa Amarilla. Oh, the, yeah, the, the gossip press. The yellow press, or, or the gossip press, yeah, la prensa de salseo, de cotillo, yeah, <laughs> the, the gossip press, <laughs> exactly. So a million people watched this wedding, which was broadcast live on TV. Eh, Clue number three, Ruben? He won the Serie A, yeah, Serie A or Serie E? Serie A, we were saying. He won the Serie A in the 2000 and 2001 season. Very good, exactly, yes, yeah, so he won the Serie A in the 2000, 2001 season, so that's a very, very big clue. Uh, another massive clue, if you think of the geography of this word, is his nickname. His nickname is the Gladiator. The Gladiator. And no, it is not Russell Crowe. It's a football player. And uh, his nickname is the Gladiator. Uh, and clue number five, Ruben. One of the top three goal scorers in the history of Italian football. Very good. Exactly. He's in the top tres máximo goleadores históricos del calcio. Uh, one of the top three goal scorers in the history of Italian football. So lots of big, big clues there. I think number three and four are the two biggest ones for me. In fact, number one's a big clue as well. Um, I think this is quite easy this week, at least for somebody my age. This guy was one of my heroes when I was growing up. Um, if you think you know the answer, write to us on Twitter. It's speak under slash football under slash and you can let us know who you think the mystery player is. Thanks to those of you who joined us today. And if you're listening on Vaughn Radio, remember, stick around with us here for La Hora Extra with Richard Vaughn, which starts in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining us as always, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye.